The sweltering heat of USA-94 might have been assumed to dampen the attacking instincts of sides. Commentator Brian Moore referred to the authorities warning that a survival kit of vast quantities of water was needed to get through the final just as a spectator. Nonetheless, there was plenty of attacking football on show, and even in the form of beaten finalists Italy, the first major impact on concerted pressing on international football. Italy, coached by Arrigo Sacchi, who made AC Milan such a force between 87 and 91 before taking over the Azzurri, employed similar tactics to the Rosaneri. Sacchi lined the team up in a 4-4-2, with one striker essentially playing as a number 10 in the hole, a high defensive line and immense vertical compactness. By attempting to compress the pitch by having no more than 25 metres between strikers and defenders, Sacchi created a natural press, assisted by his wide midfielders tucking in and the fullbacks pushing up when out of possession to squeeze the opposition wide players. Under Sacchi, the Italians had, by 1994, rid themselves of sweepers and any form of catenaccio, although Franco Baresi, one of the greatest of all defenders, was still used as an outlet to play long forward passes. However, Italy defended without a spare man, using anticipation and positioning rather than intrusive man-for-man marking and a libero. In attack, both fullbacks got forward, while central midfielders Dino Baggio and Dimitri Albertini, while both capable of playing a box-to-box role, tended to sit. Roberto Baggio dropped into the hole behind Daniel Massaro, and the energetic Nicola Berti and Roberto Donadoni played as classic wide midfielders rather than wingers, tucking in when required, but also capable of giving width. The Italians were incisive with the ball, transitioning quickly with short passes and looking to play wide or through Baggio, who had some license to drift around when in possession. Saki was not, however, totally comfortable with luxury players, and his system did require everyone to press, which led to some disputes between the boss and the divine ponytail. Brazil, who beat the attacking 4-4-2 of Sweden in the semi-finals, played a version of 4-2-2-2 seen in our last video. This was not nearly as creative in form as it had been in 1982, however. Mauro Silva and Dunga were no Soletso and Falcao. Indeed, while Dunga did often play quick long passes in the fashion of a regista, Brazil's use of Mauro Silva, dropping off to sit just in front of the back four, especially when the fullbacks went forwards, would not look out of place in Tottenham's current system. As with previous Brazilian 4-2-2-2s, the fullbacks were required to do this to provide width, though it was noticeable that Jorginho on the right, who was replaced by Cafu in the final after injury, got forwards far more than Branco on the left, despite Nicola Berti posing more of an attacking threat than Donadoni. The front four of Romero and Bebeto in front of Mazzinho and Zinho played with fluidity, but the strikers were better players than their supporting trequatistas, and so Brazil often looked for the long pass from Dunga towards either Romario or Bebeto, both of whom dropped deep, while Mazzinho and Zinho broke wide to tie up the Italian defence. While Brazil won, it was on penalties after Baggio's famous miss. Brazil's fourth World Cup title was surely its least satisfying, tactically and aesthetically. France won on home soil in 1998, just as Uruguay had in 1930, Italy in 1934, England in 66 and Argentina in 78. They achieved this without an especially talented centre-forward, either using Stefan Givorch, with Jonathan Wilson stating in Inverting the Pyramid that it may well be, from a technical point of view, he is the worst centre-forward ever to win a World Cup. Aimé Jacquet, the French coach, needed to accommodate Zinedine Zidane and ameliorate the weaknesses up front, without exposing the team defensively. He did this using a 4-3-2-1. In the 4-3-2-1, the so-called Christmas tree formation, a tough, solid central midfield three can cover for the less defensively minded attacking midfielders who can push up, or wide, or drop to gather the ball as needed. Width comes largely from fullbacks, where for France, Lilian Turan and Bizant Lizarazu were outstanding both in attack and defence. The midfield three, anchored by captain Didier Deschamps, also featured Manu Petit and Christian Karembu, who, while solid and strong in the tackle, 
also had the energy to support and could play line-breaking passes. Up front, Givorch played much as Serginho did for Brazil in 1982, a strong, disruptive focal point to hold up the ball and occupy the opposition's central defenders, while behind him, Yuri Djokaev and the imperious Zidane created and moved into scoring positions. The 4-3-2-1 requires excellent midfielders in the five that split 3-2, as well as energetic fullbacks who can provide width in attack while also getting back to defend to stop the midfield having to drop too deep. France had such good players that it worked, even with Givorch up front. Their opponents, Brazil, were beaten 3-0, perhaps a final defeat for the 4-2-2-2. Under coach Mario Zagello, who had won as a player in 58 and 62, and as a manager in 1970, Brazil also relied on the energetic fullbacks Roberto Carlos and Cafu for width. Unlike previous Brazil sides, where the right-sided fullback was more attacking, with César Sampai anchoring and Dunga again passing long from deep. The system was different from the pure 4-2-2-2 of 1982 and 1994, with both Leonardo and Rivaldo more comfortable attacking from wide, and also both able to drop deeper and tuck inside so that the fullbacks created genuine overlaps. With Ronaldo, scorer of four goals in the tournament prior to the final, up front assisted by the wily Bebeto, who dropped off into a more creative role in the hole, the formation could resemble a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-1-2-3 at times, but as was usually the case with Brazil, most players, save the two centre-backs and the sitting midfielder, popped up wherever momentum took them. Nonetheless, M.A. Jacques France overwhelmed Brazil in the final, with Zidane proving his status as one of the world's finest players, perhaps ever. France's system was designed to make the most of an attacking talent without compromising defence, and it worked marvellously. Football was finding that blending defence and attack, rather than privileging one or the other, was the way to win. Thank you.